Welcome to the first video in the Adobe Illustrator Essentials series. Illustrator is a robust program with tons of features, so this series covers just the essentials for complete beginners. While there's a focus on illustration for animation, the tools and techniques that I'll cover are applicable to graphic design and static illustrations. You don't need to be able to draw to be able to illustrate in Adobe Illustrator. Throughout this series, I'll show you how to create even the most complex illustrations by building with simple shapes. In this video, you'll get a tour of Adobe Illustrator and set up your workspace with everything that you'll need. First, let's create a new file. From the home screen, you can just click this button or the keyboard shortcut is always Command or Control N. I'm gonna go with a width of 1920 and a height of 1080 pixels. This is the size for HD video, so anytime I'm animating a scene, I'm usually using this size. Make sure that your dimensions are pixels because that's what After Effects uses. For artboards, I'm just gonna leave this at one because when you import a file into After Effects, it's only going to recognize one artboard. So if you're doing something like storyboards, you might wanna have multiple different artboards so that each scene can have its own artboard, but you're gonna to wanna to break up the file into single artboards to import into After Effects. For bleed settings, we don't need to worry about any of these because this is just for print. The color mode is important and it's important that you choose RGB color, which is for digital. CMYK color is for print. So make sure that you choose RGB color because if you accidentally chose CMYK and then you import this file into After Effects later, you'll notice that the colors look different than what you were seeing in Illustrator. And that's because After Effects uses RGB. Then scrolling down, you can leave the raster effects at screen or 72 PPI. And this is good for video because this setting doesn't really matter except for for print. And then I'm gonna hit create. Let's start with a tour of the workspace. Yours probably looks something like this by default, but if it doesn't, that's okay because I'm gonna help you customize your workspace so that it has all of the tools that you're gonna use the most. If you go up to Window, Workspace, you can find different default workspaces. I'm gonna switch this to Essentials Classic because I like this top toolbar and I like the expanded view of this left toolbar. Let's go through some of the panels that I frequently use. If you don't see a panel, you can always find it underneath Window. First up is the Properties panel. And this panel can be really helpful because it changes based on whatever you're working with. So say you're working with shapes, and I'll show you more about all of these tools later. It's going to change the settings that it has here based on the fact that you're working with a shape. Behind that is libraries, and this can be helpful to save different colors or graphics that you use frequently. These libraries work across all of the different Adobe apps, and I'll talk more about how this can be useful or not so useful between After Effects and Illustrator later on. Then in this bar here, you can click any of these to bring up different panels. If you have a smaller screen, it might be helpful to have these condensed like this, and then you just need to click on them to bring up the things that you need when you need them. But I have a bigger screen, and I like to see all of these panels expanded all at once, so it's easier to get to what I need without having to click into a specific panel. So I'm gonna click this Expand Panels button here. Let's go through these panels, and I'll make sure we have all the ones we need. So Color, Color Guide, and Swatches are all useful for recoloring artwork, and I'll go through color in a separate video. But for now, I'll just keep all these panels here. And then brushes, I don't use a lot. So I'm just going to right click on it and hit close. I also don't use symbols very much, so I'll just close that one. Next is the stroke panel. And there's actually more to this panel. So I'm gonna hit the menu and choose show options. These settings can be really useful, so I wanna have them visible. Underneath that is gradient, and underneath that is transparency. And I'll keep all of those there. Appearance can be useful, but graphic styles I don't use very much, so I'm just gonna right click on that and close it. The layers panel is helpful, but a lot of times I have lots of layers, so this is not really enough space for it. So I'm just gonna click and drag this panel over here and put it underneath here so that I'll have a lot more space for all my layers. The artboards panel can be helpful if you're working with multiple artboards, like for storyboarding, but you may not need this if you're just working on an Illustrator file that you'll import into After Effects that only has one artboard. But I'll just leave it here for now. Asset export I use sometimes when I need to export graphics, but it's not really something I use much for animation. Down here is comments, so if you have people reviewing your work, they can leave comments, but I don't use that, so I'm just gonna hit close. 
Next, I'm gonna go up to Window, and then down to Pathfinder. And that's gonna open up this new window, and I'm just gonna click and drag to dock this panel down here. I'll show you how this panel works in a later video, but this is something I use all the time, so I definitely want it here in my workspace. The align tools can be really helpful, but they're also gonna come up in the top toolbar when I have things that I could actually align. But there's some extra options on here, so I'll just dock this one behind here. The transform panel can also be really useful, so I'm gonna dock that down here as well. So you can move the panels around in any way that you like, and you can always find other ones that you may need or if you find that you use a lot, and you can open them up underneath window and then dock them wherever you want. One thing that I would recommend not doing is just having random floating windows all around your workspace because you'll have to move them around to get to things that you need and then you're just gonna end up working on your workspace more than you actually work on your work. So if you use a panel, just make sure that it has a spot where it's docked and you can save it in that spot. And that brings me to saving your workspace. So once you're happy with how your workspace is laid out, you can go up to Window, Workspace, and then say New Workspace, and then you can give it a name. And then just hit OK. One last thing that I want to customize is this bar down here, which is kind of a new feature to Illustrator. And since I learned Illustrator before this bar came out, I just find this annoying. You can definitely keep it if you find it useful, but I'm going to go ahead and close it. That bar is called the conceptual task bar. So if you want it back, you can find it underneath window. This white area is the artboard. And when you import your artwork into After Effects, everything needs to be on the artboard. Otherwise it will be cut off. I talk more about importing Illustrator files into After Effects in this video, which is part of my After Effects fundamental series. If you realize you need to change the size of your artboard, you can use this artboard tool right here. And then you can adjust by dragging or you can also adjust the dimensions here, or you can use the artboard panel and click here to bring up the settings. Now let's talk about navigating around the workspace. A couple of keyboard shortcuts that I use all the time to get around the workspace quickly is Command or Control plus to zoom in, Command or Control minus to zoom out, and then Command zero to fit the artboard to the space that you have. I compiled all the keyboard shortcuts that you need to know into this one handy guide, so make sure to download that using the link below. So let's say that I want to line these two squares up. When I move the squares, I get these nice pink guidelines so that I know when they're lined up. Those are called smart guides, and to turn them on, go up to view, and then make sure that smart guides are checked. Now that you've set up your workspace, in the rest of this Illustrator Essentials series, You'll learn the tools and techniques to create graphics, whether that's for animation or just for static illustrations.